Kaze. Now, I'll be honest here, today I run the risk of upsetting a lot of people. I know that Ford fans are very serious about their Blue Oval. I have never been into fast Fords. I have only driven a few and I've only ever driven a few classic Fords. Thus far, they've been a mixture of disappointment and genuine surprise. When it comes to facts and figures, I'm going to do my best to get them as right and accurate as I can, but my opinion of this car, just going to be direct thought I had to say that. So, I'm driving a Cosy, an RS Escort Cosworth. In 1992, if you owned one of these, the police could never ever catch you. And that's just as well, because most journeys undertaken in an RS Cosworth were probably not sanctioned by the law, on account of the fact that most people driving these probably hadn't paid for them, or at least that's the impression that you get. I don't really remember the era all that well. I lived through it, but I was quite young. This car is part of a lovely collection that I've been driving for the last few days. It belongs to a fabulous chap called Ben, and it is totally standard. If you want to see some more pictures of it and the other items he's got, check out his Instagram page. I've got to admit, it does look pretty damn good, this car. And in my heart, I know that underneath all of this, it's simply a hacked up Sierra, a car hastily put together as a true homologation special. And in fact, the first two and a half thousand RS Cosworths ever made were indeed those genuine homologation special cars with big old turbos, which meant that they weren't actually that good on the road because they were designed to make a hell of a lot more power than they actually did in road trim. This is a very late car, 1996, so it's making the standard 220-ish horsepower put down to the road through a permanent four-wheel drive system with an unusual split. It's about 34% front, 66% rear. Until I did my research, I didn't realize how rare these cars were. They only made just over 7,000 of these in total. I thought they were a lot more common than that, but no. They were expensive cars to buy, certainly for a Ford anyway, but that big issue was always insurance. They were, by the end of their production run, uninsurable. Ford did a version without the wing on the back, but everybody wanted the wing anyway, and the Escort RS Cosworth was really a victim of its own success. These days, people of course want fairly good money for them, but it's just not ever a car that's done anything for me. And I've also just come out of a car that does give me the fizz in a big way, the Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2. But that was a major disappointment, so you can appreciate that I had really rather low expectations for this classic Ford. And I have to say, I am delighted in fact to say that this RS Cosworth is far better than the Delta Integrale. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it is true. Now, I haven't let it loose yet to see what she'll really do because we're getting her thoroughly warmed up. And unfortunately, this car does still have some old fuel in it. So it's not always running perfectly right, but there's only one way really to get rid of that. And we're going to burn off as much as we possibly can. Now she's pulling. This car's reasonably quick, actually. I gotta say. You don't need to have blue lights and sirens behind you to have fun in this thing, you really don't. It's also surprisingly comfortable. The suspension setup is great. These seats are pretty nice too. Not the most hugging, but really quite nice. And Ford, I guess, we're trying to go for a little bit of a luxury theme in here as well. You've got a heated windscreen, real classic Ford trait there.
The gearbox has a long throw, but it's accurate. The steering, not the quickest off center, but it's got a great weighting to it, and it's very direct. Throttle response at the minute, it's a little bit imperfect because it is misfiring because of the bad fuel. Now, this car's owner did inquire about potentially modifying it, but he decided wisely against doing that. Brakes do work, although I wouldn't put too much faith in them. However, they've done everything I asked them to. And one other thing really upsetting me is the fact that this uh, switch here for the wing mirrors is pretty much identical to the one I had in my Lotus Evora. A car made 20 years after this one. <laughs> Odd, really. This is a car that has a reputation for being the ultimate yobmobile. It was essentially the poster child for taking without consent. I mean, so concerned were Ford at the time of this car's production of theft that even the stereo down here displays the registration number of the car. So when you go to give it to the pawn shop, the owner knows whose car you've taken it from. Uh, this is one of the biggest surprises of my YouTube driving career. I expected that this car was going to be absolutely woeful, awful, miserable, horrible, no fun to drive whatsoever, boosty and nasty and unpleasant. It's not. If anything, it has more than enough room to be a little bit more aggressive, which is, I guess, why a lot of people decided to do that to their escorts. You know, I was expecting to have to make excuses for it being a little bit woolly, a little bit soft around the edges on account of its ancient Sierra underpinnings, but it's just not. We've been using this road to test a lot of cars, and this thing moves down it like a Bentley. Not the Conti GT that I just had, because that would thump and shake and judder and rattle me down there. This thing floats. This is unbelievable. It's even actually pretty nice in here. When you consider the age of it, it feels solid. It feels well put together. Now, maybe that's the fact it's on less than 33,000 miles, but it's a nice car. You've got a sunroof. I like sunroofs. They're nice. You can see that big old whale tail stuck there at the back. And it's not just there for show either. The designer Frank Stevenson managed to create the first mass production car with real downforce. Not a lot, I suspect, but real downforce. The original design for this car had a biplane inspired double wing at the back, which looked pretty incredible. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, he did a video where he showed you and the show Wheeler Dealers even went and made a version of this car that is how he intended it to be. It's pretty crazy, actually. Not that the standard item is really lacking for drama. So natural in these bends. I mean, the steering is a little lighter than I'd like it to be. It's not the most interactive, but the chassis is plenty good. And although it's not sort of one, as a hot hatchback, this thing is amazing absolutely incredible. It's a shame that it got the reputation that it did, although I can see why. Performance cars now just don't really drive like this. They're far less comfortable. It's odd, isn't it, how time can change the perception of a car. I don't like the Escort RS Cosworth. I love it. I, mean, I really love it. I was born in Essex. <laughs> what a thing. What a thing. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.